What is color and what are the best color adjustments and tools in Photoshop? These questions I will try to answer in this section. First of all, before we start any work with color, we need to understand how the color works. You see, connecting the colors is not a random task. Colors complement each other, color works with each other. And one thing you need to know, you need to know how to connect them and how to work with them. Maybe you know the Hulk the fictional comic character from the Hulk comics or the Avengers and think of his trousers he wear and color of his body. The trousers are purple and the color of his body is green. Do you think it's a coincidence? It's not. These colors work just great together. And think of many other movies. Um, Nothing specific really comes quickly to my mind, but for most of the posters you see, for most of the characters, the colors are never a coincidence. You will see many movies where the red colors are together with the green colors, and I could give you countless examples of the color use in the Stanley Kubrick movies, in the movies of Wes Anderson, there was always a very important part of the use of colors. Not only by visual side, but also by the side of telling stories. Color is most powerful tool to tell stories. We perceive things visually. We see things, that's why all of the visual applications on your mobile are so popular, because you want to see things, you want to understand, you want to feel. And this is what is the color. And in this course, I want to teach you this way of understanding color. I want you to open one page, which is called Color Scheme Designer. It's super helpful for understanding the colors, how to connect colors and if you are a beginner photographer and if you beginner in Photoshop, it's really good to keep this page open for your work because um, it will make you feel more confident. Once you get a um, little bit more confident, you don't have to use it anymore. But for example, the first uh, theory that you have are complementary colors. And understanding this, it will be super simple. You see, connecting the colors in the opposite way is uh, always a good choice. So if you want to photograph something, if you have some of the yellow colors, photographing this on the blue sky always will look good, will look good because yellow color complement with the blue color. The red color works great with the green color. And this um, soft greenish color works great with this purple color. And here we are with the Hulk trousers and his body. I feel you you have the idea. Also, you can split this color. So for example, if you choose the red color, it will rather look good with cyan and the soft green. You can also split more colors. This will be more complicated, but sometimes you have posters with four different characters and each of them represent different color. That's a good way of also. And uh, one of the last theories that will look uh, also good is analogic color. Sometimes the image is dominated by one color. So for example, if you photographing um, is in uh, some very dry areas, you have a lot of sand, your color will be dominated by warm colors. So it will not have this different element, but it doesn't mean it look wrong. There's countless examples of analogic colors that look great together. So having this, remember this and work with Photoshop. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you is about um, the tools in Photoshop. So which tool is good to work with color? There is not one tool. The thing that you have to know is the color theory, color, color harmony, and how to use the certain tools to apply to your image. So one of the most common tools that I use often for light work will be curves. And you also can work with uh, this as a as your color tool. So for example, you'd like to warm this image, add some red and add some yellow. 
that will be very simple, but does it suit to this image? Well, it still looks good to me, um, but I think this image would need much more of the of the other work working on the sky. So just warming this image doesn't do this work. But as you can see, the curves is great. Uh, it's actually great uh, color tool, and you can uh, cross um, process your image using this tool. Other tool that would be commonly used is photo filter. Photo filter is just applying one filter. For example, if you want to warm your image, you would just use warming filter or go with the other warm colors, go into cold colors. I don't use photo filter that often, but it works great for uh, warming up the skin tones, for example, which I was showing you before on one of the portraits example. It was uh, this example, as I remember. So warming uh, portrait, it's always a good idea. And also solid color uh, will work good for warming the image, though you always have to remember about blending mode. So for example, changing to multiply, changing to soft light and color and manipulating with opacity. Blending modes are crucial for understanding how to work. And also I will explain you why is it so important, but let's discuss about some more tools. So I told you about curves, about photo filter. My favorite tool ever is color balance. You will see me as a retoucher. I use color balance for most of my work. I also use color balance for my landscape images. And why is it so powerful? You see color balance allows you to separate um, shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. It will give you amazing opportunity to work with the color. So for example, I have shadows. Uh, probably I would like my shadows to be slightly green um, or maybe even like mixing green and red. I go a little random and I will go more cold tones. Then for the mid-tones, I would like probably mid-tones to be more yellow, a little bit of red, and for highlights, I would like them to be warm as you can see. So this is the power of color balance. But what we need to mention about the uh, blending modes, you see, I told you I'm mentioning blending modes step by step and we're using them because when you use any tool, it not only affects the colors, if you work with colors, but it also affects the contrast. So we're working with lights and working with lights affect the color values. So working with colors affect the light values. So to work more um, effective, you always can change blending mode to color and you will make sure that when you do this, the lights are protected. So as you can see, the lights are not changing just the color. So this is very important. Remember, color blending mode is crucial for your work with the colors. The last tool I want to mention, or maybe last two tools because also uh, gradient maps would be commonly used. I don't really use gradient maps, but it will be worth to mention to you uh, how to work with gradient maps. I like to work um, in the opposite way. So for example, if on the shadows, I would be using uh, the cold colors. For highlights, I would be using warm colors. And then switch blending mode to color, for example. Well, it looks uh, so, so, so like always go down with opacity. Um, as I said, I don't think the gradient maps are giving you this amazing control, but some people like to use it. Some people even use it for uh, turning the image into black and white. But as I said, my favorite tool, color balance. The second tool I like to use is selective color because selective color uh, allows you to work really selectively on your image. So for example, we have some blue over here. Let's go to the blues and we can manipulate with this blue we have. I would like to get some more of the cyan look and let's see if we can go down with the yellow color and we work um, mostly selectively on the sky. For example, green, we want to add some more yellow tones into the green and some red tones, as you can see, it also works. So that's why I really like to work with selective color. It allows you to work selectively with each color. 
as well as with a black color, which will be um, powerful if you want to have more control over the shadows. If you want to work on general colors, it's always good to work with neutrals, though I work um, very rarely with this. I don't really uh, like uh, to lose this all control. I like to work very selectively, but well, it might give you uh, good results uh, sometimes. So this is the introduction to colors. Um, the different adjustment layers for working with colors, but mainly understanding how colors works uh, will be crucial. So, for example, this was also behind the reason why it was good to change uh, the background of your portrait into the blue tones, because the skin tones are always warm, no matter if uh, on the skin color the tones will be always the same, and orange color will more likely look good with the color blue. Uh, so that was the reason behind that. So now let's jump to some other lesson and learn more funky stuff.